Hello everyone again, it's Philip uh, at Zoolab back again with another video. Uh, this time it's a really fun uh, sort of uh, video where it is we're actually going to be creating a tank. Now uh, this is a, a, a big part of my sort of passion for the animals that I have is I love uh, sort of creating miniature sort of, uh, uh, sort of rainforest habitats for them to live in, which is why typically I do enjoy my reptiles as a sort of an animal group as a pet uh, in general because I love working with sort of plants and wood and uh, rocks and to, to create these sort of environments it's like a miniature sort of environment for them to live in. And what we're going to be doing today is kitting out uh, a fairly sort of a typical rainforest habitat in uh, one of these exoterra tanks. These are really nice. This is called a sort of a, a mini tall one and so might be suitable for lots of different little uh, sort of uh, lizards such as crested geckos or um, maybe even sort of some other smaller day geckos, things like that. Um, it's not a particularly big tank so it's probably not big enough for sort of putting chameleons and things in uh, but we're basically just going to be talking all about how it is I go about sort of kitting out and designing my tanks. Now, uh, for any tanks, obviously you start with a fairly empty canvas. These ones are great because they do come with this, this background, this backdrop already in there, uh, which is good because uh, it means you don't need to sort of think about covering the back with anything or putting painting the back or covering the back with a sort of a screen or anything. Instead, you can go right ahead and get into your substrate straight away. All it is that I'm going to be using is compost. So inside my bin here, I've got lots of uh, uh, sort of compost, essentially sort of soil, uh, which which we're going to put into the bottom of our tank straight away. Now, soil is a good sort of substrate for lots of these reptiles, um, sort, of, sort of rainforest reptiles, so these tropical lizards that re require a slightly higher humidity. We're going to put lots of that in because we are going to be working with one uh, sort of real plant again uh, today, which again sorry, adds humidity to the sort of environment. Um, now, what's, what, one thing that's really important to uh, consider about this video is all the sort of reptiles. Uh, different species of different animals need different sort of setups and uh, it's really important that you know exactly what it is you intend to buy and uh, perhaps sort of house and make sure that you know exactly what it is that that sort of specific reptile needs uh, because there's lots of different types there's obviously ones that live in the, in the desert which would be completely unsuitable to sort of design a, a sort of a rainforest habitat for uh, and vice versa you know there's lots of there different things in the in the rainforest that might need higher places to climb and lots of frogs or toads might need sort of lower places in a bigger sort of a wider or sort of girthier tank to sort of uh, sort of have crawl space or moving space on the floor so you do need to know exactly what it is you're intending to sort of get uh, and so that you can design their tank to be uh, perfect to fit for them uh, but we're just sort of doing a generic tank now that's our substrate in there in the bottom, I'll just pivot that down. You can see the soil's just in the bottom there. Now, the things that I'm working with, if I lift up the camera now, in fact, I can take you over just to my table where I've laid it all out. These are the sorts of things we're typically sort of working with normally, is things like uh, bark down at the bottom here, uh, a few rocks, bits of wood, and these are actually all fake plants. The only real plant we're using today is this sort of uh, umbrella sort of plant here. And a nice bit of wood that I found actually just from an old privet, uh, sort of a, a bush out front, in fact. And a little bit of rope that we might be able to make some sort of vines with. What we're going to start with, in fact, is popping that real plant, that uh, umbrella plant, in place first. And that's the biggest thing we're sort of be putting in, and then we'll arrange things around that. So I grab the plant. We, it's in a nice pot at the moment, and so we've got to pull it out of here. What I'm also going to get rid of. Actually, to avoid making too much mess, what I can do is take the lid off this and do this inside here so we don't make too much mess. There we go. Get that out of the way now. Put that up there. Then we've just got the plant. We're also going to get rid of this stick straight away as well because we want it to try and look as natural as possible. So we're going to place that up. Let's bring the tank forward so you can soak this in. Now it is quite a large plant. We're going to have to first create a little hole in the substrate at the bottom and we're going to place it more or less that sort of at the back on a slight angle so it takes up a nice sort of amount of room at the front there. Now that provides lots of climbing space and it also is a really nice sort of aesthetic sort of set off. Those real leaves look a lot better than lots of these fake ones often do. Um, so it's nice to have a, a, a living one in there, again, adding to the sort of the humidity that, you, that, that you, your reptile might need to have as well. Now what we can do is uh, hopefully add a little bit of um, uh, sort of hiding space for it. Now, these bits of bark work brilliantly. What you can do is very simply sort of put them almost up, uh, sort of flush to the wall, but allowing enough gap for things to hide behind. Lots of geckos like to be sort of uh, kept sort of enclosed to keep them sort of uh, feeling safe and secure. And so this is a very simple way. And if I try and show you as best I can with the camera, what I'm going to do with this thing is simply at the back here is put it into the soil just with a little gap in between the back. In fact, if I bring it around here, you can see 
what I've done is I've just left it a little gap away so there's a little gap in here and there's just a little gap between but it's pushed down securely into the substrate and I can pack it in so it won't move too much and I'll also I'll show you how I'm going to sort of secure it even further but that just uh, provides a nice little uh, sort of hiding space and what you can do sometimes is also using perhaps a stick uh, sort of like this is you can stick that through bits of cork like this and into the back to have them up higher as well so things can still sort of hide so that's what it's looking like from the front just at the moment it's looking all right but still pretty barren so we want to add some uh, more things in there and make it a sort of nicer habitat for our animals so what I'm going to do to secure that bark even further is use some rocks these are in fact bits of brick that are broken open and this will allow us to create perhaps our lowest area if I put one in the front here I'll, I'll put them in place and then I'll, I'll get the camera down I'm just gonna create a sort of a low space here which is perhaps where we might think to put our, uh, our water dish and in fact if we needed to keep that water separate to avoid anything sort of toppling and stuff this is a great way to sort of keep them separate now I'll just very quickly put the rocks in there and I'll bring the camera down so you guys can see just at the front there whoops there they are just the rocks in place at the front they created a little well and that's where I might put their water dish to keep it separate from the other plants and make sure um, you know when I when I'm putting drinking water in there for the animals it's not getting lost in the in the soil or in the uh, being sort of going to, to the plants instead of the animal if needs be so that's that those uh, rocks in place we're creating a nice low platform it also allows you to sort of see down here which uh, if uh, if you do have something like a gecko um, they're likely to create themselves a, a toilet space where they go to the toilet and it often is sort of away from where it is they're doing the rest of their climbing and whatnot so typically they might have a sort of a toilet at the front there which makes it very easy for you to sort of clean things out um, if they do uh, create that toilet space now we're going to provide a little bit more height and that's where I think we'll get this nice plant uh, this nice uh, sort of a uh, bit of branch involved it's really nice in fact looking at uh, all these sort of twists and turns make it look very cool but you can obviously tell it's far too big so what we need to do is uh, get our pliers out and trim it down to size. Now, the uh, the sort of the, the base of it, I think, is really nice. And I think basically we'll get a few. And we'll try and measure it up alongside our tank. I think if we start chopping it from around here, I'll just get rid of a fair few of these. Oh, if I'm if I'm strong enough. <laughs> Some of these branches are quite big, but hopefully we get all of these off. Then. You can think about where it might be best to push this one. This one's a bit thicker. Oh, there we go. Now that's a, that's looking a little bit better for size. Now, an interesting thing you can do with this is this is obviously how the plant has grown, providing lots of sort of uh, little sort of branches and leaves up here. But what you can sometimes do with these things is put them upside down because uh, then it starts to look a little bit like roots, which is quite a cool look. Uh, in our tank, I think, in fact, we are going to stick it straight up. I think, in fact, we can probably pop it in fairly uh, simply like that. Maybe with its base actually in that water section. And fix that there, but I'm pushing it in a little bit. Well, I think that looks pretty good. I'll bring the camera around so you can see. There's all those nice branches there. And what I think we need to do with those branches is decorate them slightly. So that's when things like um, sort of some of these fake plant vines and stuff uh, come in very nicely. This I think is one I used in my, in my old fish tank. But what I can do is pop this in place so that it in fact looks a lot like a creeper and dangles down as opposed to sort of growing up, which is a really sort of popular, really cool look, which is very typical for sort of lots of plants in the rainforest. So we thread this through some of these branches. Pop it down the back there. And I think that might start to look quite nice. What I might typically do here is instead use a, another real plant, something like a devil's ivy. But uh, because of the situation, I haven't been out of the house too much and I haven't been able to get very many uh, sort of living plants at the moment. I haven't been able to go down to my a sort of local garden centre. Um, that looks pretty good though for now. We'll leave that like that. So again, just bring the camera around so you can sort of see it coming together piece by piece. So it's just a, a plant basically that uh, uh, sort of is climbing and creeping onto the, uh, the, uh, the sort of the branches there. And I think one last thing I always like to add is again to sort of hit these different levels 
is I like to put in some sort of plants down at the bottom as well. Um, so it might be sort of things like this, with, uh, again like a sort of a, a fish tank plant, or it might be sort of ones uh, like this, uh, which often look like uh, quite nice because they, they bring a bit of colour into it, a bit of a, a bit of red. And so I think I'm going to go with that one, and that might be something that I just pop down at the front, uh, in, in, in sort of maybe one of the cracks, or just behind sort of these rocks, so it looks like it's sort of um, a bit of a rockery, a bit of a rock garden sort of uh, look. We can pop that down there, that looks pretty good, rearrange the leaves so it looks alright. Now uh, what I haven't done here is I've just been focusing on the aesthetic but it would be very uh, important to include things like a water dish so uh, uh, down at the bottom perhaps so uh, obviously your, 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 your animal can drink and it might be in fact if I turn it around and show you my sort of uh, um, my uh, crested geckos tank it might need a feeding platform as well um, to sort of uh, keep them fed if they do or if you're tracking bugs in it shouldn't be too much of a problem but that's basically how I think uh, we'll end up a nice looking tank made pretty quickly uh, just with sort of some very natural bits thrown together um, and I think it's quite a long video so we'll wrap it up there I hope you've enjoyed seeing sort of uh, how it is I might go about putting together sort of some of these tanks in a very uh, simplistic way um, but sort of rather effectively as well it looks quite good uh, perhaps I'll post some pictures online so you can sort of see uh, with it all put together uh, what it exactly looks like at the end but I hope you've enjoyed seeing sort of how, how it is I've sort of pieced these things together it's been great to chat to you and I'll be back again soon with some more videos all the very best bye 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 bye